that we surrender to you, God, that we put our mind in complete surrender. This spirit of ours, we surrender to you, this body, that it must come in alignment with the will of God and for the kingdom of God. Father, we just thank you for Jesus Christ, our Savior, our matchless King, God. Oh, God, the watchman of our soul, God. We just thank you for being the risen king, our Messiah, God, who gave up glory, came down from glory to establish the kingdom of God on earth, God. And we just thank you that he had selected us, privileged us to be ambassador of this earthly kingdom, God. Oh, God, like never before, our country, our globe, our world needs you, our leaders, the Biden administration, God. Like never before, God, we need you, our leadership, the body of Christ, our state bishop, our state administrative bishop, need wisdom like never before, God. Oh God, our first lady of this ministry, God, the leadership, God. Oh God, everyone in their respected place, God, and all the churches, God. Oh God, give the churches, the church of God, a supernatural courage to come forward. A supernatural courage to speak with thus says the Lord in such a time as this. Because God, I know there's a hunger and a itching to hear the word of God. And they want to hear what God has to say in this time, God. Oh God, even on last night in the city of Deerfield while driving to work, the street lights were out. The gas stations were shut down. And God, it sent such a level of turmoil, uncertainty. Your safety was at risk last night. But God, I thank you that even it was just for a moment. It was just for a moment. And by the time we got off the exit, we began to see the light, God. Oh, God, let us know that if we seek you, God, that we won't stay in darkness long because light has no communion with darkness. Amen. God, we bless you. Oh, God, we lift your name up. We honor you. We adore you today. We magnify you. We give your name all the glory and all the praise in the name of Jesus. And we will declare and decree that you are the King of Kings and that you are the Lord of Lord and that we will worship you. We will adore you. We will bow down before you. We will humble ourselves today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we call that name? Jesus, Jesus. Come on, come on, listen, listen.
that's in here. Hallelujah. Come on, take this moment. God has been magnificent all week. He's kept us, hallelujah. He's kept our mind, hallelujah. So grateful to see the saints this morning, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Sister Latoya, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So grateful to see her today, amen. In the house and those that we've been praying for, we're believing, come on. We won't stop praying and we won't stop praising. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's going to do it for us. Hallelujah. Come on, faith arise. Faith arise. Faith arise. Even when we're feeling a little weak, come on, we speak to ourselves, say, faith arise. Faith arise. We will trust the Lord. Come on, go ahead, take that moment. God, we thank you that you kept us all week. Hallelujah. Grace, hallelujah, hallelujah, and mercy, you've been provided, yes, hallelujah, we lift you, Jesus, this is the end, this is the end,
Yes, God. you we thank you we thank you this morning God we glorify you this morning God we lift you up this morning father we thank you God just for life for help for strength this morning we thank you God that we can come into your house once again God it go oh God thank you thank you for your presence this morning God we feel your presence this morning God and as we feel your presence this morning, God, we know, Father, that there are breakthroughs getting ready to take place, God. Father, we thank you, glory to God. We come before you as meek and as humble as we know how this morning, God. Knowing, glory to God, that you are God that is able to do all things but fail. We thank you, God, for healing the sick this morning, God. We thank you, God, for remembering those that are in the hospital, God. Those that are afflicted in their bodies, afflicted in their minds, God. We pray now, God, that you will destroy, God, every sickness, God, every cancer, God, every stomach pain, every neck pain, God, every leg pain, every headache, God, every affliction, God. You said it in Psalms 34, God. This poor man cried, and you delivered him out of all of his troubles, God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, huh? but you deliver them out of them all, God. Every affliction, God, we call it cast down in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Those that are watching, glory to God. We pray now, glory to God, that the anointing of God will go, Father, to those that are watching at home, those that are watching by Facebook, God, those that are watching in their car, those that are in their living room, God, those that are watching in their bedroom, God, not able to make it to church this morning. We pray that the anointing of God will go to them, Father, and break glory to God. Every yoke, God, break everything, God, that the enemy ha has tried to come upon your people with. Break it now, God, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Ha. Break glory to God. Mindsets, God, shift us this morning, God. Oh, God, love on us this morning, God, as we love on you this morning, Father. We thank you for the atmosphere. Terminate it with your goodness huh, and your mercy, God. We thank you, God, for doing it for your people, huh? even our next generation, God. Thank you for doing it for our children. Huh? Thank you for doing it for marriages, God. Thank you, God, for shifting ministries this morning, God. Touch every bishop, every pastor, every overseer this morning, God. Help them glory to God to deliver your message, God, to your people, God. Those of God huh, having trouble, Father, in their very minds, God. I bind up suicide this morning, God. I bind up sickness this morning. I bind up headache this morning. Trials and tribulations. God, I thank you. Father, I thank you this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for your very presence this morning, God. Thank you for touching your people, God. Somebody came this morning huh, to get a breakthrough, glory to God. Somebody came huh, because they need a word, glory to God. Huh. And I pray now in the name of Jesus huh, that as our bishop come forth, God, huh, that the word, glory to God, will hit somebody's situation, God, and deliverance will take place. Huh. In the mighty name of Jesus, huh, we thank you. We thank you, God. That the anointing of God is breaking and destroying yokes, God. Father, we thank you for our very nation this morning, God. We pray now, God, that you would breathe over the nation, glory to God. Breathe, glory to God, encouragement this morning, God. Too many of us are down and out, glory to God. Weak in our spirit, God. But I pray for a spirit of upliftment, God. A spirit of encouragement. A spirit, glory to God, that we are lifted, glory to God. Help us to know that you're still the king of kings. The lily of the valley, the bright morning star. That you're still an almighty God. An all-seeing God. An all-knowing God. A powerful God. Oh God, we
we thank you for being a wonder in our soul, God. We thank you, God, for breathing glory to God. Life once again. We prophesy to our nation as Ezekiel prophesied to the dry bones. We prophesy. We prophesy to the nation. Be delivered. Be set free. We prophesy to this very atmosphere. Be conducive to the Holy Spirit. We prophesy to every circumstance and every situation in this place that is delivered and set free in the name of Jesus. And Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise because miracles still happen, glory to God. And I thank you, God, for the miracles in this place, the breakthroughs in this place, God. I thank you for reconciliation, God. I thank you for doing it again, God. Thank you for turning us around, God. Turn the situation around, God. Thank you, God, for faithful men and women that are standing, that are holding on and enduring to the end. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory, glory to God. And we thank you, God. We seal this prayer now, glory to God. We seal the prayer, glory to God. I feel the presence of God in this place. God, I thank you for doing it, God. Thank you for doing it for the married people, God. Rekindle, God. Restore now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for healing that person that is sick, God. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. Somebody is here this morning, glory to God. Standing in proxy, glory to God, for a loved one this morning. And I pray, God, that sickness will flee. We diminish it. We demolish it now in the name of Jesus. Hey, glory to God. Father, I thank you. Thank you for your presence, God. Thank you for being in this place. Thank you for doing it, God. In Jesus' name, I pray. And let the church say, Amen and amen. Oh, Jesus. Glory to God. We thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for your anointing and your presence, God. Do it, God. Do it, do it, do it, God. Do it for the children. Do it, God. Do it for the daughters. Do it for the sons, God. That weeping mother, God, been weeping all night long for her daughter, for her son. God, do it for the mother. Do it, do it, do it, God. Yeah, Baba, Baba, so terrible, God. Do it, God. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Yes to your will, God. Yes to your ways, God. Yes, God. No matter what it looks like, tell God, yes. He want a yes, Baba, so. Yes, God. Have faith. Have faith in the belief, God. Trust God. Trust God. Trust God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Thank you. Trust God. Oh God. Hey, 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 hey. Oh Jesus. Trust God. Hey God. Yes, God. We thank you. Hey, 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 hey. Glory to God. Trust God. Remain faithful. God go remain faithful to you. I don't care what's going on. I don't care about the gas prices. I don't care the war. Yes, the war is on our mind, but we're not consumed with war because we serve a God that is able. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus, let God have his way. Trust God. He's still a way maker. He's still a problem solver. He's still a healer. He's still a deliverer. He's still a wonder in your soul. He's still making a way. He's your provider. He's your protector. Hey, 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 hey. I am not my cattle. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, my God, 
Come on, put those hands together. Don't y'all just sit there and look. We are sanctified, church. Put those hands together and give him all the glory. My, my, my. Come on, Holy Ghost. Woo. My, my, Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, it's going to get better. Look over at another neighbor and say, it's going to get better. Somebody shout, yeah! Somebody shout, yeah! Woo! My, 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 Look over at your neighbor, say, neighbor, I got good news for you. God is still on the throne. Gas may be high, but God is still on the throne. Putin might have lost his mind, but God is still on the throne. And as long as God is on the throne, it's going to get better. Ah, yeah. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord. Woo, God, I love you. Come on, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. He is a good God. And it's going to get better. I'm not going to get bitter because I know all things are working together for my good. I'm not going to put God on a timeline. But I know it's going to get better. I know it's going to get better. And God is even moving time to give me time for it to get better. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, appreciate the sunlight. God is giving you more time to see it get better. And the land doesn't look. I don't know who that was for. Say, Lord, thank you for the time. Lord, I know I don't waste it sometimes. Lord, I know it'll mess up sometimes, but thank you. You are a redeemer of the time. Woo! I don't know who out there. Is there anybody who lived wretched like me? Is there anybody who lived foul like me? Is there anybody who was jacked up like me? But God stepped in right on and gave me a little bit more time. And so now that I have the time, Every time is a good time. I don't need no praise to you. I don't need no microphone. I just go into the recesses of my mind. I have an Isley Brothers moment. I go back in the recesses of my mind. And I realize, good God all day. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, E and J could have chucked me out. If it were not for the Lord who was on my side, Jack Daniels could have took me out. If it were not for the Lord who was on my side, Cavassier could have took me out. But I'm so glad, I'm so glad that Jesus looked beyond my folks, my stumbling folks, my sipping folks, my lying folks, and he stepped in on time. And I ain't got to wait till the battle is over. I'm saved. Woo. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Maybe that's not your testimony. But I do know this much. You were still on your way to hell. You might have been smelling good, but you was on your way to hell. You might have been smart, but you was on your way to hell. You might have had a pocket full of money, but you was on your way to hell. And Jesus stepped in right on time. And so I tell my money, I ain't got a praise for my money. I ain't got a praise for my brain. But when I think of the goodness, I said when I think of the goodness, somebody ought to think of his goodness. When I think of his goodness, and He's ever done for me. I got to tell him that. Come on, put those hands together one more time. Come on, put those hands together. The Bible says you clap your hands, all ye people. It's a sign of triumph. It's a sign of victory. It's a sign of freedom. 
is a sign that God still has loosed me from the hand of the enemy. And I'm as long as I can clap, I can win. As long as I can clap, I can overcome. But then he says, shout unto the Lord. Come on, open your mouth, shout unto the Lord. If you're redeemed, let the redeemed say so. If you're saved, say so. If your Holy Ghost feels, say so. Ain't no such thing as a silent saint. Ain't no such thing as a quiet saint. Praise lifts up out of me. My body can't even sit still. My, 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 my. My, 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 my. Somebody just say better. Say it's going to get better. I'm looking for better. I'm looking for better. Once again, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord if you can. He's a good, good God. And we thank the Lord for his mercy. Hallelujah. And I'm never afraid to give God a great praise because he's been a great, great God. We want to welcome you again. Hallelujah to the hallelujah. <laughs> oh, yeah. My, 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 In the book of Joshua, chapter 10, Joshua was in battle. He's winning. But he realized some enemies were going to get away. He said, Lord, can you give me just a little bit more time? The Bible said he turned his face to heaven and said, now God, will you give me a little bit more? The Bible said the Lord stilled the sun. I don't know what enemy you're dealing with, but I'm here today to tell you, God said, I'm going to give you time to deal with that devil. Because some devils, if you don't watch, they'll roll up on you again. There's some demons, if you don't deal with them, they'll, but God said, I give you time to deal with that devil. Look up at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Kill them all. Kill every lying spirit. Kill every lying demon. Don't let it live to breathe. Don't let it live to speak another one. You got power. We break the generational curse. It ain't going to get past me. It might have touched me, but it won't transfer past me. Give me time, oh God. Listen, won't have no place in the Pelt family. Because I'm dealing with that devil every chance I get. Every time that spirit rise up, I remind that devil that the God who delivered me can deliver my son, can deliver my daughter, can deliver my son-in-law, can deliver my grandson. That demon ain't going to live because he's giving me more time. And I need somebody to take a little time to put on the whole arm of God and stand ye therefore and let the declaration be it will go no further in the name of Jesus I take authority over my home over my children over my atmosphere goodness and mercy shall follow I don't know who that was for but you don't need to be afraid you don't need to be afraid Woo. God, I love you. He said, I give you time to deal with it. And you will not be defeated. But you will be the agent of destiny. Come on, put your hands together. Let me get these announcements out of the way y'all sit on down. My God. My God. Listen. Even to those online, you don't have to be here for God to move there. He's an omnipresent God. And as we're praying here, he's still moving there. He is able to do it. Listen, if you're visiting with us for the first time and you're here today and you don't mind, will you please stand that we may just acknowledge you to all of our first time visitors. I think everybody might be homegrown. Amen. Listen. We are in the month of March again, all March birthdays. Amen, amen, amen. Any others? Hey, amen. Bless you, bless you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. I saw you, boy. I saw you. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Are there any other anniversaries? Are we have we got. Oh, we saw. Okay. Oh yeah. Woo! Okay. Woo! And you know what? Let me get my belt. You lucky, you lucky I need my belt to hold my pants up. Why don't you shove me? Oh, you see that you yeah. Me. At the house of radio. Why don't you We are in a marriage. Me. Got a whole song for it. It is my privilege, my honor to say you may kiss your husband, you may kiss your wife. And say what? Say it all the time. Say your what? Jesus ain't mad if you tell your wife, your husband, your lover. He ain't just. Say your what? Say you love me. You gotta put, got put that woo in there. Well, happy anniversary to you. Let's give them a hand. Amen. To all of my March birthdays. To all of our March anniversaries. Listen. Just a few announcements. We should have these uh, out and you should be receiving them. Listen, one of the things we do want to tell you, we're doing our best to conserve trees. We're doing our best. Because it's unfortunate. Some of y'all, y'all got seeing spirit, but then y'all got ball them up spirit. So we hand y'all a piece of paper. Y'all see it for a little minute and ball it up. So we're trying to help you from having to ball up something. But if you would, Please pay attention and make sure that we have your email. If we have your email and things of that nature, we will make sure that you get all of these announcements. Next Sunday, as you see it, it's a little cold outside. And we were supposed to baptize today. But our, uh, but our, uh, no, nah, we ain't getting out of that water today. So no, no. And the intern has to do it as well. Between the wind and the water, we say, no. I'll be all right the next week. Praise the Lord. And if it's cold next week, we'll look. If it's cold next week, we'll move it again one more time. But we want to say to all of our candidates, thank you for being so patient with us. Um, I think we let's do this. We're gonna move everything the next week. I want to have it mixed up, so we're gonna move everything the next week where we have you come and testify and all of that great stuff. Uh, so that'll be on next Sunday, Lord's willing. As well on next Sunday, the women's fellowship will have their uh, their week, their monthly. Uh, women's Fellowship at Hampton Inn. Please see Sister Barry for information about that. Listen, as you know, the end of the month, we will all be headed to Orlando for the State Women's Conference, March 31st through April 2nd. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. As you know, we move into the month of April. April is a great month. It is a month in which we celebrate Good Friday, the Resurrection Sunday, and then as well on the 29th through the 30th singles. If you're interested, the State Singles Conference will be in Daytona. To all of our men, we want to remind you that we have been suspending Man Up Monday, but Brother Quint McGirt and I want to meet with you on the fourth Sunday, right after church, just to kind of share with you as we want to regather and relaunch the um, men's ministry. We're looking for some men to volunteer to be on the board, and if you would help us, that would really, really help us. So, men on the way out, make sure you see Brother McGirt so you can get this flyer. And again, share this with brothers who have been close. Um, those who've kind of been disconnected because of COVID, if you're watching, listen, fellas, you know, one thing I know about men, you know, we'll jump right back on in. So listen, we need you to be with us on the fourth Sunday, immediately after church for a quick, quick meeting. It's going to be a great time. Listen, if you're interested in being an usher, Sister Reverend Shavana did this morning reminded you that it's wonderful to be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. And we need some ushers. The ushers will be meeting next Sunday, 8.45 a.m. to just share with you as we're looking for many of you to help this great ministry uh, as we truly do that which the Lord has called us to do. I think I have all the announcements out of the way. Listen, I want to prepare your hearts to give even as you do online. The beautiful thing that we've come to is we now have a great discipline of giving. Now, we don't have to pass the plate. We do it every now and then. Uh, but the Lord has been so gracious to us to where many of you uh, give electronically. You give through credit card, different various means. I want to challenge you, though. Please, as we do not pass the plate, don't you pass the plate. Take the time to sow. 
take the time to let God know, God, I thank you for all that you've given to me, and I gladly and cheerfully give it to you. To those of you who are watching online, you can also be engaged by going to our website, www.radliving.org. You can still give through Cash App, dollar sign, Rad Life, the number two, or you can still give through Snail Mill, P.O. Box 305, Deerfield Beach, Florida, 33441. And again, to our members who are at home, we do ask you, that is, we do ask you, would you please continue to be faithful in your giving? And I'm challenging you that I realize that some of you are slowly coming out. You are always welcome at home here at Radiant. Nobody's going to be asking where you've been. Listen, we all been home. You know, we all been watching through the internet. And so we don't come with any sense of judgment. We will meet you with a sense of joy that we are all together. And oh, what a time, what a time, what a time when all God's children get together. Didn't you feel excitement? Listen, I know you like it at home. I know you probably moving around at home. But I'm going to tell you, so ain't nothing like the real thing. So come on and meet us every Sunday morning, 930, right here at Deerfield Park Elementary. And we believe the Lord is going to richly, richly bless you. The praise team is going to come with our sermon selection, and I'll be right back before you. Amen. I missed y'all last week. Y'all missed me. Amen. I was trying to watch, and then the devil just cut out the internet and all of that. I was Jones. I was like, oh, Lord. I enjoyed my My mother's here, y'all, this morning. Amen. Amen. We had a wonderful inaugural mother-daughter trip last week, and God has been gracious to us, and we're so grateful. Amen. That's to prepare your hearts for the word mind, we kind of theme, the breath of God, the very air we breathe, his presence, his Holy Spirit, his word, we need all of that to exist. The very inhale and exhale that you have is his breath that's in your lungs, you realize that. Amen. And so we honor God this morning. Hallelujah for your presence, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Come on, help us sing it. You give light. You give light. You are love. You are love.
Father, this morning we thank you for being a great God who's met us with your great spirit. We pray we've given you a great praise. Now, Father, we come for your great word. Touch my mind, touch my mouth. Let this time of ministry bring all glory and honor to you. Spirit of the living God, will you bring illumination to your divine revelation? But more than that, will you help us to have divine application? For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Truly let now the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, to be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It's in Jesus' mighty name. If you have your Bibles, turn with me again to Psalms 127. It's hurting your hearing this morning. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city. The watchman waketh, but in vain. It is in vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat breads of sorrow. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. As you take your seat, say, neighbor, I've got to build back better. You may be seated. For the next few weeks, for the next few times, Men and women will come to this sacred desk to exhort, to encourage, to educate you with the mind and to impart into your spirit to build back better. Whether you believe it or not, each of us are building something all the time. Whether it be considered an image, whether it be considered a reputation, Every day you live is a building block in the building of life. Whether you like it or not, some of us, time has proven that we have been efficient builders. Some of us, time has proved that we have been consistent builders. But for some, time is revealed uh, that we are haphazard in our commitment to building. That not only we haphazard, that we are not solely holy in our building. And that becomes a critical point because I do believe that one can be holy and a great builder. I do not believe there's a conflict. I do not believe there's a constraint. I do not believe that God is somewhat... Uh, nervous that you would get saved and not be successful. I don't believe that God has a problem with you having the Holy Ghost and you going higher in life. His only requirement is when people check your building, did you build better? This past week, down in Miami, there's an investigation going on a high rise that literally tumbled. This week they went to review some of the files and found out that critical information has been deleted. A few years ago we saw a slow motion camera, a sky bridge 
leading people from a parking garage to a learning institution fall flat. Both of these things have a couple of things in common. First off, they were mechanical failures, but they were also building failures. That somewhere between the time of planning and producing, a problem existed. And the reason you must build back better because both of these buildings show you something. You can look like you have a finished problem, a finished product, but if you have not addressed the right problem, you will fall. You may not know when the fall will come. You may not plan for the fall. And in both cases, great will be the fall. Can I tell you what happened in both sets of falls? Everybody started saying it wasn't my fault. Everybody said it wasn't my fault. And so one of the things that God says so that you can help in both cases, there's some things in the natural. He said, I'll help you to build better. First off, look at your name and say, you got to inspect everything. In both cases, if somebody would have inspected, we might not have had that failure. See, but let me tell you how the devil is. The devil tell you, you good. Now look how good you look. Look how good you look. In both the bridge and the building, can I tell you something? That both of them had what they call stress fractures. That there were signs they couldn't handle the weight. And God said, I need you to build back better because there's a world that will make you believe you can handle the weight and you will fall under the pressure of the stress fractures. That's why he said, unless the Lord. Look at your neighbors and neighbor. Unless the Lord. You're going to catch it. Unless the Lord, you got to handle it. And some of you so gun on that you don't want to wait for unless the, unless the Lord go with me. I may not want to do that. Hallelujah. Unless the Lord say so. And every now and then God says no. And he's not telling you no because he don't want a yes. He's telling you no not so you can get the right yes later. He says you got to have an inspection. But not only what you have an inspection. You, you got to be honest about your impact. So let, let me just be clear. I, I've really been struggling with how to work this series around. We live in a world where people want to be known. They want to be seen. But they don't understand the impact of being known and seen. No disrespect to these social media content people. I want them to get there. I, listen, if, if I can find a way to monetize the stuff, I do, I would. But can I tell you something? I've learned that maybe I don't need to be known and seen to have an impact. Because you know what? Whether you like it or not, there was one force that had an impact on that building nobody saw. Gravity. Gravity didn't have to go out there and promote itself. Gravity didn't have to go out there and tell her, I'll pull you down if you... Listen, gravity said, I'm going to always be here. And I'm going to have a big impact. And God said, let's be clear. You can make yourself socially known, but unless I hold you. <laughs> you can have a following, but if you don't have to follow, you're going to still feel nobody likes you. He says, you got to understand, you got to build back better. Because if you don't inspect right, you won't even have the impact you want, even in your failures. You know, I think the Lord allows sometimes us to see people fall so it will kind of jog us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to just tell you, my, this is Pastor Pell. No, no, this is just one of the stories my daddy taught me. When uh, OJ had a little situation, uh, my, daddy, my daddy pulled me in the room. I never forget. He said, come here, come here, come in here. He said, I know you think, you think everybody like you. He said, but uh, you see how OJ running for his life? He said, don't let people party with you, make you think that they will protect you. He said, after all that, only one guy. Everybody knew him as Juice, but only one guy. And my daddy said, you better find your one guy. And my deep daddy being deep, Deacon Pelly said, and what a friend we have in Jesus. And he said, listen, because I tell you, he said, listen, he said, I'm going to be up front with you. I love you. But he said, if you get in a bad enough trouble, I'm not coming down there to get you. 
He said, he said, he said people know you mind. They'll, you still have my last name, and they'll know you a pill. He said, but they ain't got to worry. You ain't got to worry about me putting up my house. He said, I know where you're at, too. He said, listen, I ain't got to put up my house because I know where you're at now. I, that, thing, that, thing, that, thing, that thing stuck with me. That many people are letting a lot of people who have no future in your life, who don't want to see anything fine in your life, be a part of your life. And if you're going to build back better, you need to say, unless the Lord pick my friends, unless the Lord order my steps, unless the Lord keep my mind, unless the Lord, he said, unless the Lord build this house. He said, you know what you do? You labor in vain. Y'all know I sing that song, if I labor, God going to give me a crown. But this verse lets me know something. He says, don't fool yourself. You ain't strong enough to build the best life for you. I've had to stop these young people. Listen, listen. your bishop try to be hip. Your bishop try to be cool. But I try to, try to get your language right. This, this YOLO mentality. Yeah, you're going to live twice. You're going to live in heaven or hell. You're going to live. You don't only live once. And for some of you, you're building like you're going to live once. But you better build back better because you're going to live twice. And he says, if you don't let the Lord begin to build your house. I thought about this. You know, as I was doing my study, there are two, two, two great themes on this. One is this is a wisdom psalm for families. Saying that it's a wisdom psalm for family. Saying to a husband and a wife, listen, being husband and wife is hard enough. You need to let the Lord help you. Yeah. I love Lady Pell. She loves me. We good. But I need Jesus. She needs Jesus to be with me. I heard you. <laughs> and unless the Lord build her, she may want to beat me. And except the Lord build me, I may suck my teeth and say, you can get on too. And I say that because I've watched even couples who say, well, she looked pretty at the wedding. I see the, I see the honeymoon picture. Everybody just booed up. <laughs> and then one day, I get a post. I know why Adam wanted to get out of the garden. It wasn't the snake that got him. It was that heifer Eve. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a, wait a minute. It was, wait a minute. Wasn't y'all just booed up last week? Now she, she the reason you chewing the wrong food. What is this stuff? And then they call me on the phone, Pastor Bet, you just don't know. I said, I'm going to tell you what I know. You ain't let the Lord build your house. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got issues. And if you marry somebody, they got issues. And your issues and their issue going to need the Lord to help you through our issues. I need to tell some of you saying, folks, y'all just as crazy. And the Lord need to just be true. You need to tell the truth. And the devil ain't even saying, he ain't even in the devil. So don't put that on me. They, that's them. That's them. I ain't even had nothing to do with that. And if you don't let the Lord first off build this house. I tell every young lady, I don't care what you put in your body. Right. I know some of y'all laughed at me. Y'all called me and clowned me and said, Bishop, why you messing with people eyelashes? Because I'm watching them build the wrong house. I'm not going to spend $75 on something I can lose and can't find. Contact wrong. I step on top of on the bottom of my shoe. If you don't let God build this house, you ain't going to never think you're pretty enough. You'll never think you're fine enough. And you can put toothpaste, you can put cement, you can put every bit of jelly everywhere you want to put. You're just going to be wiggly and still worried. I'm watching men do it now. Men out there trying to, listen, bro, let me tell you something. This all Millicent going to get. When she got me, there was stuff up here. Stuff is shifting. Stuff is moving downstairs. I can suck it in as long as I want to, but she needs to understand, around here is kind of heavyweight now. People laugh at me. Y'all send pictures of me on Facebook with hair on my head. I ain't got no hair. I ain't finna buy no hair. Yeah, 
Think about this. Y'all just, just, just walk with me a little bit. I come here one Sunday. I, let's, 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 again, I'm not trying to mess with you. I'm just trying to talk real because I really want people to build back better. I go get one of them waste things because they got them for the men too. And, and y'all see me come from over here. Because you know I'm going to be sucked in all, it's going to be to my backbone. It's going to take all I can in Jesus to walk with me on this teaser's journey. Y'all will be texting people, child, the bishop is, maybe his stomach hurt this morning. He said, what's the matter with the man? Then I come in here with a, I come in here bald head this Sunday, and next week, I got the, the Amazon forest on the top of my head. Y'all going to go to my wife and say, Sister Pettis, he's sick. What's the matter with it? Now, again, I'm not telling people to not eat right. I'm not telling you not to diet. But I'm telling you, the Bible said, as let the Lord build your house, even your dieting is in vain. Because after you done starved yourself, you still won't see yourself as significant in the eyes of God. I might as well go in and eat and see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living than to fight for a rice cake. Praise the Lord. He says, let me tell you something. David says, he said, not only is you need the Lord to build this house, he said, but you labor in vain to even keep it. And David moves on and said, he moves on in one context to say, listen, your house is part of a bigger thing. So let's just start with the natural body. If you build your body back better and you get secure in who God has made you, when you get with another person who's secure in who God has made them, man, it makes life a whole lot more easier. He says, because if not, nothing you get will be secure. He said it would be in vain for you to try to keep the city. What happens when God starts expanding you? And if God has not built you, you will always be mad. You will always be sad. You will always be jealous. You will always be insecure. He said, and guess what? You won't even get good sleep. You figure you got to be the watchman. Can I tell you what being saved will help me do? Go to sleep. <laughs> and y'all know we have church at 9.30. Ain't nothing like a Sunday afternoon now. Y'all, and, and, and can I get a witness out there? And there's nothing, it, it ain't nothing like that comatose sleep. You just, when you wake up the next morning, did I sleep the whole day? Is it, 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 it Monday? It is, is it Monday? Going in, you check your little your little slobber line. It's all the way to your ear. You just Lord, that is that is wrong. I don't slobber in my ear. Lord have mercy, Jesus. He says because when you don't let the Lord build a house, you feel you gotta watch it. You gotta maintain it. Listen again. God is never telling you not to manage. Managing is a little different than maintaining. Managing means somebody else own it. I just need to make sure we don't destroy it. And at a certain point, I can tell the manager, manager, we got a problem with this project, and you got to fix it. He says, when you let me build your house, you can always come back to the, man, to the, to the owner. He, listen, there's nothing wrong with God saying there's nothing wrong. When you let me start building you back better, you have every right to come to me and say, God, I don't understand. God is not sitting around saying, man, I don't, I'm not mad at you for, for not having understanding. Lady Pelt's one of her favorite verses of scripture. If you lack understanding, ask of God. Listen, there's some things I've asked. I, I, I feel like David. David said, Lord, why do wicked seem to prosper? God wasn't mad. He, listen, he recorded to let you know, listen, I understand everybody got a few why questions. Why? But after you have the why, you say, God, I trust you. And I'm glad I don't have to keep up with it after I give it to you, God. Three children now all across the country. A grandson. I can't keep up with everybody. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says you can't even, which one are you giving thought? Could add one inch to your own height. Which one are you, listen, as much as I love my hair, 
the little bit I still got left. God said, which one of you know the numbers of the hairs on your head? When 4,017 fell out my head, God said, well, it's fell out last Tuesday. I don't have to keep up with that. When I send Millicent to work, I'm not sitting around checking every two minutes. Where you at? What you doing? Where you at? What you doing? I sent her and said, Lord, uh, you know she go down there to the peoples on, uh, on Martin Luther King. Get up from here to there. She called me and let me know she made it there. I said, God, thank you. You did your job. And she gets, you know, you know how wives get some money. You didn't call me today. Well, Jesus got you. I don't say that. I don't say that in a mean sense. I don't say that in a mean sense. But can I tell you something? What I've learned is you can worry yourself trying to keep people. I, listen, I'm not saying I'm not concerned. But she'll tell you she ain't concerned about me either. She put me on planes all the time. Listen, we leave. I leave sometimes literally. Five, I'm the first flight out of Fort Lauderdale many mornings. Me and the man open the door together sometimes. When I leave my house, this is how she treat me. Let me know you get there. I don't sit and go, you don't care that I'm getting on a plane at 5 in the morning. I can't believe you're not up with some, some flowing nightgown fixing breakfast. The best part of waking up is folded and you in my... I look up there in the face and say, girl, go on back to sleep. I'm going to be all right. God got you here. He going to have me there. Except the Lord build a house. We couldn't keep up with one another. I don't mean I don't love her. No, she know. Now, listen, I know we, we got a little thing where she don't text me a few times a day, and I don't text her a few times a day. So with your phone, bro? What, 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 this is what we doing today? This is what we doing today? But I've had to come to grips. All of my children are now grown. And except the Lord build a house, I will lose my mind trying to figure out how to keep them right. What I've said, God, I done done the best I know to do. And you told me they'll give from you. God, I'm going to give my children to you. And God, I don't know when you're going to totally deliver. I don't know when you're going to totally set free. I don't know when you're totally going to make the life what you want it to be. But I trust you, God, because if you build this life back better, I know you can build those lives back better. He said, listen, when you find yourself struggling, I'm going to get out your way. I'm up over time right now. He said, listen, it's in vain. It's a waste of time. For you to sit up all night long, losing your hair, can't hardly eat, can't keep nothing on your stomach, trying to build something that God, listen, except the Lord build it. I'm freeing myself from self-image. I don't care what people think about me. You'll lose your mind over a post. I'm watching young generations literally kill themselves because somebody posts something on Facebook Wreck their whole life. Listen, if they got the time to post, let them post. It don't bother me. It'd be one thing if it was just young people, but I see it in adults. See, I'm going to tell you something. We have, we have created an insecure society because we ain't let the Lord build a house. We have literally hurt ourselves. And when we're talking about building back better, it says you have to let the Lord build a house. He said, if you don't let the Lord build a house, he says, guess what? It'll be vain for you even to rise up early. Let me, let me tell you what the Lord does. When the Lord starts building the house back better, he builds your mind to deal with whatever the day going to bring. So I, I tell people, I don't have bad days even when bad stuff happens today. Because I say, this is still the day the Lord has made. That, that, don't you? Listen, I will admit, I'm, I, 95 get on my last nerve. Get on my last nerve. I was just traveling a few days ago, and this guy on the street, a man in front of me did a full 360 turn. I just, I, just out the blue, just on 95, just, just, and you know, you, you know, I, I gave him a, but he just, just decided, I guess this is, this is a good place to just do a donut. He just, and then he just went on down the road like it was nothing. I went to myself. Uh, you know, I thought maybe he had one of them golf, you know, you know, grocery cart situation where his tie just got. But no, he just whatever. I said, what is he doing? And I felt the spirit of anxiety coming upon me. Folks, don't don't let the devil fool you. That's a that's a spirit. And if you don't let the Lord build you, 
Anxiety will sneak up on you and ruin your whole day. I could have, man, I felt it rise up on me, Sister Tracy. I would just ask, dumb knucklehead, crazy, come on, man. And all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost said, did he hit you? Can you still get to where you're going? And listen, just as quick, the Holy Ghost pulled that into my mind and said, he didn't hit you. You're still getting to where you're going, and now you even got a story to tell. I promptly said, thank you, Jesus. And I matter of fact, y'all might have seen me on, post, on Facebook. I said, I did everything. I said, Lord, I'm going to stop complaining about everything. Because the devil right now, when you don't build back better, everything makes you aggravated. Listen, it's his breath in my lungs. I don't have time to pour it out of being aggravated. I don't have time to pour out the breath of God talking about people. I don't have the time to use the breath of God to talk about situations that don't bring him glory. It's his breath. And if I'm going to use the breath, let everything that have breath do what? It never happens unless you let the Lord build back better. So I'm going to close with two points and I'm done. If you're going to build back better, this verse says, watch faulty construction. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, quit being a handyman. Take it to the holy man. And listen, I know some of y'all watch HGTV, and I know some of y'all got the gift, but some of y'all ain't got the gift. Some of y'all is Green Acres. Anybody remember Green Acres? N nothing in his house worked. To use a phone, he had to climb a telephone pole. Everybody got phones in the house. At least Petticoat Johnson had, he got a phone on a pole that he got to climb up. And for some of y'all, God said, ain't you trying to climb on that pole? Lady Pella tell you, you ain't never got to worry about Pastor Pella. Now, I don't tell y'all penny stories. I don't fix nothing at the house of help. That ain't my gifting. And the stuff I do fix, I usually have to call somebody to fix what I call myself fixing. Now, here's my point. Some of y'all got a house that ain't nothing working, but you won't call Jesus to come fix it. You're hard all over the place, but you won't call Jesus to come fix it. Your spirit all broke up, but you won't call. Listen, you don't want a pelt number. You go in there and get you some duct tape. You go and get some WD-40. It's still working. You got the. You got to go through a whole ritual to get something to work. God said, listen, if you just turn it over to me, when you go, it'll come easy. But when you depend on your faulty construction, your house going to fall. But then he said, not only false construction, he said, many of us engage in a foolish chase. David says that we are foolish for not letting God build a house. He said, but we are foolish for chasing the wrong things that will never help our house. So let me close with this. This is my last point for today. I don't bring anything into my spirit, into my space, or my dwelling that can upset my house. Listen, as the pastor, I'm obligated to hear you. As a husband, I ain't obligated to take what I heard home with me. Because what it will make me do is put me on a faulty chase. I have certain friends I like, but I don't let them talk to me because they lie too much. And, and, and let me help some of y'all. Some of your friends don't lie, they like to exaggerate. Let me help you. Exaggeration is, is a lie sometimes. Listen, listen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's taking the name of the Lord in vain. So let's just talk about it. And I, and I know you want your story to be saucy. I know you want your story to be hot. But man, just tell people, just tell them the truth. The truth will make you free. And hey, listen, 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 let me tell you what I get. Let me tell you what I get. So this is just Pastor Pell, because this I literally get these kind of stories. Well, you know, you know, Pastor Pell. Well, I know you and Lady Pell, y'all look like y'all happily married. But I, I know you got an app on your phone for friends. What kind, what kind of friends I need to have? What well, a friend I have in Jesus. And if anybody who is a friend I'm down on Facebook who, who gets slick, they won't be no friend. But that's, but you know, what you do when ladies come up to you? I remind them I got a wife that I go home to. Don't they, don't they try to talk to you? Uh, I guess they try. I guess. But after they try to talk to me, I take my listening self right to my house. 
and I don't talk to them about what they just tried to talk to me about. I'm going to talk about my house. Because y'all know how we handle our finances. Now, let me ask a question. Who the head of your house? God. I, I hear the little slick coming out their mouth. And that stuff will get down in your spirit. And you go tear your whole house up because some knucklehead who ain't got no woman, don't want no woman, who paid a bunch of child support to a woman, will mess you come and ruin the woman you got. I tell them lying demons, listen, bro, we good over here. Yeah, every now and then I got to go and get the checkbook. Yeah, I feel like I got to fill out a requisition, but you know what? Ain't not one I checks bounce. I go in and reread. I get my pen together and triplicate. Anthony T. Pell, for the expenses of the following, this is my justification for the following. And I ain't going to lie, listen, listen, listen right there. She, she, she be looking at me sometimes and say, you hate doing this, don't you? There's a little bit of tin, there's a little bit of little twins right there. But I ain't never finna let somebody who ain't got nothing ruin what I got. Well, you know, I get this one. Hey, Pastor, let me ask a question. Uh, uh, you know, we, we finna, we finna, and again, nothing against people who are trying to advance. But don't get mad at me when I won't chase the rabbit you chasing. So you invite me to something and want to introduce me to something. I hope I ain't bothering nobody. I'm just telling you what I get. And I see them. You know, if you look, look at this person. This person made $14 million. Look at all the money in their hands. Look at all the cars. Look at the houses. Now, I'm going to tell you what Pastor Pell looking at. I'm looking at a magazine in a house. So I don't, I don't see this house in this house. But if you sign up now, Pastor Pell, in two weeks, you will have $14 million. Okay, well, let's, let's, just, let's just walk this back a little bit. Let's just walk this back a little bit. Or, uh, last week, you asked me for five for a Happy Meal. I leave their house that they ain't happy with trying to get a house that I'm not too sure I'm going to be happy with and go back to my house that I'm happy with and ruin my house. That's a vanity. He says, it's vanity. Why chase that stuff? Because I've seen it too many times. That when you chase the wrong thing, even when you catch it, it ain't the right thing. So the Bible says, I want you to know you can build back better. He said, unless the Lord builds the house. He said, you can work all you want to. And it will come to know. I'm going to talk to you for a few weeks every Sunday I can. To remind you, don't you let faulty construction <laughs> make you forget you have a faithful creator. Uh, he's able <laughs> to put your life back together again. <laughs> I heard an old nursery rhyme <laughs> that we all rose up with <laughs> about a fella named Humpty and Dumpty. <laughs> How he sat on a wall. <laughs> I heard that Humpty Dumpty <laughs> had a great fall. And just like Humpty Dumpty, some of you going to the wrong people to try to put your life back together again. But if you take it to Jesus and bring him all your broken pieces, he will make your life brand new. He said, and when I put it back together, I'll give you a reason to run. I ain't chasing money and I ain't chasing honey. I ain't looking at eyes and I don't want another woman's thighs. I'm just trying to tell some of you that I had a mind that says I'm going to build back better. This poor man cried and I 
realizing himself, God, build my house. My mama can't build it. My daddy can't build it. My education can't build it. Your posts and tweets won't build it. But if I let the Lord build my house, my labor never be in vain. We done had to bury some folks because of COVID. And can I tell you what I realized? We done checked some people's building. We done put people in the casket. And we done almost had to lie because their building was faulty. But there been a few faithful saints that when we close the book, we can say, now thanks be unto God that give them the victory and their labor what in vain. They might not have been rich, but their family was blessed. They might not have been smart, but their family was blessed. They might not have had the best in the eyes of the world, but they let the Lord build their house. And this is the thing that hurts me. They done left it to a generation that's going to lose it on the tax sale. They're going to lose it to some unscrupulous desire or dream. But I'm going to tell you that if you let the Lord build your back better, he will pick you up. He will turn you around. I hear the Lord say, I will take it even at the last moment when they put him on that old rugged cross, there was a man who said, look at my house. My house is ready to be condemned. My house ain't worth living in. He said, but master, will you do me one favor? Will you remember me when you're going to your kingdom? That man died on the cross. That man was down in the tomb, but one day he gonna get up from the ground, build back better. I'm trying to tell you, don't you let this world make you think you need a pocket full of money. Don't you let this world make you think you got to be the smartest in the world because except the Lord build a house, your degree can still make you dumb. Your money can still make you miserable. Luther said it like this, a chair is still a chair. But when nobody sits there, a house ain't a home. You need God to make your house. You need God to make your home and say, build back better. Stand with me all over the house. My two takeaway points. Faulty construction and vain chases will cut you off from the favor of God. See, if you let the Lord build your house, you will always have the favor of God. Folks, favor do what money can't do. If you let the Lord start rebuilding the house, he'll fend for your house. Look at your neighbor and say, is there some things you won't have to fight? He said, not only will I fend for your house, he says, but I'll stabilize your house. Folks, in this day and time when people are all shaky, that third of should be he will fortify your house. I'm not afraid of the air of my day. Of the terror by night. Why? Because the Lord is my keeper. I'm telling some of you today as we begin this journey, I want you to build back better. This morning, first off, you need to say, Lord, I need your help. And if you're not saved this morning, you may be watching me online. I want you to understand. I'm not asking you to join this church, which I'd be honored to be your pastor. But I'm telling you now from this word that some of you are chasing the wrong thing. That's why you're miserable. Let me say this, and I don't mean to hurt nobody's feelings. I'm not talking about nothing. I'm just talking about what the Spirit put in my heart. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. Man, let me tell you something. There are days when I told you anxiety starts trying to come to your bishop. And you know how I stop anxiety from getting over a hold of me? I look at what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Folks, even as your bishop, there are days people kind of start to grate on my nerves. I'm not going to lie to you. And the thing that keeps them, their grating from degrading me is I remind myself I got a greater God who has sustained me. My mind going to be in perfect peace after I finish talking to them. 
There are days I leave people that have, listen, and no, I'm going to be clear, so I don't want anyone to think that I don't like talking to you because that's not what I'm trying to imply. I, I believe me, I, I'm the bishop. That's my job. But I'm talking to the people who don't, who don't mean me no good. They, they, they bring garbage trying to see if I'm a hole on the garbage. Let me tell you what I do with garbage. I receive it, and I throw it right in the garbage. That's where you want it to go. I just keep it right on moving. But Pastor, why you didn't say nothing about it? It was garbage. And you know what I do? I then call Spring where I live at. Tuesday and Friday, I take it out by the road. Every day I take a garbage can to Jesus and say, God, this is the garbage these jokers are trying to give me today. You know, listen, the garbage man and me ain't never thought about something I put in that trash can. But I take that back. Sister Pet trying to put some stuff out there. Hey, holy, holy. I don't ever go out there in the garbage can and go, oh my God, don't throw that. Once I put it out there, I said, take it to the dump. And here's the sad thing. There's some things I do put out there, and we do put out there for one purpose. Because we have some people who come and get scrap. Because I'm, I'm not talking about them, but every now and then the scrap people show me something. They'll leave junk right there. And folks, that, that speaks to me in the Holy Ghost someday. I watched the brother, I know something, I just knew somebody was going to take it. I watched the old boy pick it up. Got right in his truck. I said, I saw another brother. He looking at the window. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He says, unfortunately, when somebody wants to infect you, they'll always be around to see how it does affect you. He says, you got to be like that junk man. Take the time to inspect but let it be clear, that's junk. And some of you need to get in your spirit that I know you're trying to leave stuff for me. I, listen, you got me. I, I may have to take the time to inspect it, but I don't have the time to receive it. And I watched the stuff I thought was good. The garbage man come right along. He ain't nice with it. He ain't sitting around going. That rest come and grab it. God is saying there's some things you need to let me grab and just snatch away from you. You done brought it to me. Why are you riding there trying to hold on to it? So this morning, you're not saved. God said, I want to help you build back better. I'm going to help you clear some things. I'm going to help you get some things together. Because I realize your construction's faulty. And that you got these feeble chases that you're on. Why don't you come? You might be at home. I want to challenge you. You can get saved at home, but you can start building back better right there. Why don't you come? You say, Bishop, but I'm, okay, it's not me, but I just need prayer this morning. Why don't you come? I want to make sure I do this as the Holy Ghost has led me. I don't know what your issue is, but I want to pray with you because we want to start you building back better. Why don't you come today? Will it be one? Hallelujah. Folks, you got to build back better. One of the quickest ways to do that is by prayer. And let me say something to you. If I got to pray every Sunday, I'll pray every Sunday. Sometimes I'm not praying for anything but for God to give you strength to hold on. It ain't a prayer of agreement. It ain't a prayer of, of, of me assigning something to God. It's just God give him strength to hold on. Folks, ain't nothing like that. Sometimes you got to say, Lord, help me hold on. Lord, help me to hold out till my change come. Hallelujah. Father, there's these men I had this altar this morning. Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus that, Father God, you would touch them, oh God. Father, something in this sermon today has provoked them to come to this altar. But, Father, I bring them to you, the master builder. I bring them to you, God, asking you to do what only you can do, God. Address, change, Cause them to know, God, that it shall be well with them because they've turned it over to Jesus. Holy Ghost, 
Will you saturate the mind? Will you stabilize the soul? That the feelings won't be tossed to and fro, but they'll be like a tree planted by rivers of water. Father, I thank you that what we are seeing here now, God, is what you do. You call. And God, what we will see is that you complete. We thank you for it now. Father, we thank you for those watching online. We pray, oh God, that you bless them, oh God. Cause them to know, oh God, that the same power that is manifested here is manifested in their home. And Father, we make a declaration, except unless the Lord build this house, we'll labor in vain. So Father, for that heart who's heard, but this God of this world is making them apprehensive to apply it. I pray God you pull them a little closer to you. Goodness and mercy, will you get them? Will you let them know that the word works because the God of the word works. I pray now, oh God, that as you put them back together again, they'll be able to say, he built me back better. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Will you put your hands together in the name of the Lord? Thank you, gentlemen. Listen, I know I haven't done the last few weeks. Are there any first fruit seeds? If anyone would have. Amen. Listen, gentlemen, Brother Quentin McGirt will be having some flyers. We want you to get those from him. Remember, the fourth Sunday, we will be having a quick meeting after service to talk about uh, Man Up and Men's Ministry. We're looking for a few men who would like to serve on the advisory board for that. We're definitely looking forward to that. Ladies, remember, on next Sunday, you will be having your women's ministry fellowship. We will move baptism if the weather permits to next week. You know we take them to the beach. And we're looking forward to a great time. To those who are watching online, if we could be of any spiritual help to you, please let us know. Again, to those of you here on your way out, please go and see our giving kiosk. Bless the Lord and give him. Again, will you stand with me all over the house? I'm about to let you go. On the way out, I'm asking you to do something. I don't know if I have enough for everybody, but I have a couple of teaching aids that I want you to to do. One is a little Lego. I want every household to definitely, I know I think I have enough house Legos for everyone, but I want everybody in the household to get a Lego. And this week I want you to take the time to put those Legos together. I want you to start building your family back better. And then uh, we had this Jenga thing, and I don't know if I got enough of these, but at least once a household. Let's see, I'll make sure I'm doing this one. It's a six-sided uh, block. And I want you to put BBB on it, one side. I don't want you to maybe put your family's names on there or something that you want to see God do as a house. And I want you to keep this somewhere prominent for a while. And every morning I want you to say, Lord, build us back better. I believe this in all my heart, folks. If there's ever been a prophetic push in my soul, I hear the Lord saying, I promise you, I'm going to put you back together better. Some of you, you are on the verge of seeing the manifest abundance of God. But God says, first off, you got to be stable. You got to be willing to work together. And if you are willing to be stable and let me work on you, by the end of this year, people are going to say, man, they are built back better. So, Father, we bless now these emblems these tokens of teaching that for every household that will receive a block and for every household that will receive some Legos that Father God they won't see them as toys but they'll see them as instruments of teaching first off oh God that we must be stable in a world that's being tossed by to and fro by every wind and wave of doctrine we believe God and God, we believe that building better starts right in our home. I come against every bit of schism and division in the home. That is that husband, that wife, that son, that daughter, that mom, that dad gets their little Lego piece, God. Father, they'll see that we are all supposed to be fitly joined together. And Father, we may be varied, but we can still have the victory. I pray now, God, as we have that one piece of wood, that, Father God, this would be reminded of, first off, because of the cross, everybody can build back better. That, Father God, as we put build back better, BBB on it, Father, on the cross, every 
accusation was nailed on the cross, I believe, God, that we're going to see families. We're going to see abundance come to pass because, God, we want you to build back better. But, God, once we get past our family, I believe faith is going to rise. Father, I see signs and wonders shaking loose in this house. Father, we don't want to just come to church and shout and leave sick. We don't want to just come to church and dance and not do better. But I pray, God, as this church, the Radiant Living Worship Center, the, makes a vow, oh God, that we will build back better. Father, we got too many miracles that need to be wrought in this house. Father, doctors can't bring the miracles. Science may not bring the miracles, but God, we trust you. And so, Father, as we take these emblems, we say, God, build our faith. We trust God. We believe God to build back better. Now, Father, as we leave this place, but never your presence, we ask that the angel of the Lord would encamp himself about us, that goodness and mercy would follow us all the days of our life, and that the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart, would be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer, and all who love the Lord said, amen. Again, we love you to life. Listen, you can build back better. We'll see you next week. God bless you.